having this seal, what are we looking for? We're looking for the seal of God, right? This, this is it. The foundation of, of God has, has this seal. The Lord knows those who are His. What is, what is everything in the Gospel? To know God, isn't it? The Lord knows those who are His and let everyone who names the name of Christ do what? Depart, Depart from iniquity. Some iniquity? All. Most iniquity? All. All iniquity. This is about character, isn't it? The seal of God is about character and it's about having victory, if you will, over sin or iniquity in our life. Well, this makes total sense because in the Old Testament, when the Bible talks about sealing God's character within us, it says in Isaiah 8.16, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. That's really the essence, if you will, of God's everlasting covenant. Hebrews 10.16 saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their what? Into their hearts, and in their minds I will write them. This is a people that have learned to love God to the point where they would rather die than sin. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Instead of dying to sin, which is where I fear even in my own heart I am sometimes, these people would rather die than sin. These people are very, very concerned about dishonoring their God. Because you see, sin at the ultimate, if we understand sin correctly, ultimately it's not right from wrong as much as it is pleasing our Maker, right? Glorifying Him in everything that we do. Giving that witness to others in our life, in our character, that we serve the living God. We serve a holy God. And understanding that when we sin, it's not just that we're guilty and condemned and all those things, even though that is true. But the higher level of understanding of sin is when we are ashamed because we have hurt our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why Joseph, when he was tempted by Potiphar's wife, he didn't say, why should I commit this great sin and be guilty and be condemned to death? What did he say? Why should I do this great sin against my God? Right? He understood that it was about character and it was about how he would serve his Lord and Savior. Revelation 7 and verse 8, And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Who are the 144,000? The big question is, is that number literal or symbolic? Now there's a lot of mountains to stand on and defend the truth, and there are a lot of theories on that. This morning I'm just going to present to you my study Every one of us has to study the Word of God for themselves, right? So I don't want you to leave here and take this as dogmatic truth. I want you to study for yourself. But my convictions as I have studied this subject of the 144,000 is that it is a literal number. And I want to explain to you why. But before I do, I want to make it very clear that I do not believe nor am I teaching that the 144,000 are the only ones saved. Does everybody here understand that? What I believe will be very clear by the end of the presentation. But there is something very special, something very unique about the 144,000 that I believe makes it a, a literal number. Alright? Numbers in Revelation depict a specific value. When we interpret prophecy, we have to work off of prophetic rules of interpretation, if you will. And all through the book of Revelation, every time you come up against a number, it is a literal number. <coughs> Now that number may be affiliated with a word that is symbolic. Let me give you an example of that. Revelation 12, 6. And the woman, what does a woman represent in Bible prophecy? Church. church. The woman or the church fled into the wilderness. The wilderness in Bible prophecy is a place of refuge. Okay? Where she hath a place prepared of God, and they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Now, in the Old English, the score is 20. 3 times 20 is 60. 1,260 what? Days, right? Okay. 1,260, literal number, right? That doesn't represent anything. 1,260 is exactly that. 1,260. What is symbolic is the word days. In Bible prophecy, what does a day represent? One year. You understand what I'm saying? So the number is literal. What it's attached to 
symbolic. Everybody understand that? We know from Ezekiel 4, 6 and other texts that in Bible prophecy a day is equal to a year. So, when we think about this 144,000, why is God so specific about a number? Why does He have a specific number of people that He's talking about here? And when we look at the following text, we're going to see that God always uses 12 as a literal specific number of people to represent Him on the earth. Whether it's 12 or a factor of 12, it all works out the same because 12,000 times 12 is 144,000. That's why from each tribe, there's 12,000 and there's 12 tribes. God has always used a literal 12 to represent or to be a uh, witness, if you will, of His church. There were 12 patriarchs, exactly 12, from Seth to Noah when the, when the world was destroyed. There were 12 from Shem to Jacob. There were 12 judges from Othniel to Samuel. There were 12, exactly 12 disciples. 12 tribes of Israel in the Old Testament. 24 elders, we read in Revelation, which is a factor of 12, 12 times 2. Some believe that the Old Testament 12 tribes were represented, as well as the 12 disciples making 24 elders, a representation of the character and glory of God in His church. Two women came to Jesus in the same chapter in the Gospels. One woman had been flowing with blood for 12 years. All she wanted to do was touch the hem of Jesus' robe. Remember the story? And God healed her. And she no longer had that flow of blood. In the same day, Jesus came to a 12-year-old girl who was dead. And He touched her. And she lived. She came to life. What does a woman represent in Bible prophecy? A church. The Old Testament church flowing with blood through sacrifices. Jesus puts an end to the flowing of blood. In the same day, He resurrects or brings to life a new, young, vibrant girl representing the New Testament church. A lot of symbolism in these things. But again, why 12? Why does the Gospels even record the number 12? I think there are hints and clues in these things. 12 precious stones on Aaron's breastplate. You look at heaven, there's 12 foundations, 12 gates, right? There's a tree bearing 12 fruits 12 times a year, right? All these things, 12, 12, 12, 12. Why is God so specific about 12? I think the Achilles heel, if you will, of all of this is found in Acts chapter 1 and verse 22. You remember that Judas, who was one of the 12, hung himself, right? And so how many disciples, if you had 12 and Judas hung himself, how many do you have now? 11. Has the Holy Spirit fallen yet at this point in Acts chapter 1 and verse 22? No, it hasn't. The next verse, I believe, tells us why. Well, not the next, but verse 26. And they cast their lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven. Now, if they have another disciple to add to the eleven, how many do they now have? Twelve. And guess what? Now, the Holy Spirit falls on those people. And remember, in verse 22, it says, one of these must become a witness. Right? God wanted how many to be a witness for Him? Twelve. Eleven was not good enough. And so they cast lots. They have one more disciple. Now they have that complete number of twelve. Twelve witnesses for God's church. Now we'll notice that twelve thousand of these people come from each one of the tribes of Israel. I believe that the tribes of Israel represent, because remember, numbers are specific, Whereas terms, names, and that kind of thing in Revelation, lambs, dragons, beasts, all those things, represent something in Bible prophecy. Well, the tribes of Israel, I believe, would represent, if you will, the New Testament church. Why do I say that? Because when we understand in the New Testament that Israel is not a literal thing, we're not looking at literal uh, Jerusalem today in Bible prophecy. We're looking prophetically at God's people. We are the New Testament Israel. Romans chapter 2, verses 28 and 29. Paul says, For he is not a Jew which is one, what? Outwardly, but he is a Jew which is one, where? Inwardly. God does not look on the outside appearance of a man, but God looks upon the heart. 
And so Israel, God's children,